All right, so March 1st is coming up. High school tryouts are coming up. Uh, a lot of high school kids are going through that right now, sort of the anticipation there. But you have a unique story, Eric. So um, why don't you give us a little bit of background on that? Well, January last year, I was not feeling all that great. I realized I had a bunch of lump, lymph nodes stuck in my neck, and uh, I decided to go and get that checked out. I had a surgery to see what was going on, and very next day after surgery, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a cancer of the blood and lymph node system. Why don't you tell us about sort of that day, um, you know, the day you, you had the surgery, the biopsy, and then, and then that following day, sort of what, what went on there? What were you feeling? The day of the surgery, I was just kind of thinking to myself, like, nothing bad is going to happen to me. This is just some sort of freak thing going on. Um, the next day, easily the worst day of my life, my mom called me mid-afternoon mid that day and said we need to go down to D.C. And, you know, she hung up the phone and I was like, what's going on? She got home and, like, the first time I looked in her eyes, she just started crying a little bit. Oh. So what's going on? And um, she told me, Eric, you have Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was like, what's that? Like some sort of kind of cancer? And she goes, yeah. And I go into the other room, and hands over face, I just started bawling, you know, not knowing how much time I had left. That day, you, you, you thought that it was the worst. Yeah, I thought it was over. Wow. What did you think in terms of, you know, probably a lot of your life you've been associating with yourself as a baseball player. What did you think about your, your baseball career? Did you think about that? What did you think about in terms of your life, your career? All, all those things. What what sort of went through your head as far as as far as you know things being over? I mean, not knowing how far until the baseball season actually starts. I was just thinking, head to the cages every day until it's all over. Your son's been through cancer. Now you've been through this with him. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about what what the hardest part of the entire experience was. For both of you. Well, for me, um, I think the hardest part was, of course, that very first, your son has cancer. Um, really, for almost two weeks, that's those are the only words I had stuck in my head. That's all you have in your head, and you know, all you can think about is your son, your your kid's mortality. Right. Um, it was scary. It was tough. Let's say like our first round of chemo would start tomorrow. I go tomorrow in the infusion room for eight hours, just nonstop chemo. Oh. The next day for about four hours. The third day for um, like three hours ish, and then I'd have four days off to recuperate. Then I'd go that following Monday um, for 45 minutes, and it was it was the worst. I didn't feel good at all for that first week, week and a half. Um, you know, I was getting nauseous a lot. Right, and going, going back, going back real quick, before, before you started treatment, I mean, you hear, you, you, you hear that word cancer, right? I mean, what, what goes through your head at that, at that moment? I mean, it's kind of plain and simple. It's like death, you know, like you don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know how long you really have. You don't know like anything that's going to happen. The doctors told us if you're going to get cancer, this is the cancer that you want to get. And um, I found that very ironic. I couldn't believe that that was true. I mean, you know, your kid has cancer. You never want to hear that. Right. But they explained everything to us clearly and educated us. And then as we worked with the nurses and the other staff there and um, met other parents who were going through it and saw all their children going through treatments, came to realize that it was true <laughs> right. and um, actually met 30, 40 years survivors of Hodgkin's lymphoma. So obviously, you know, that the, the treatment worked, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're here, you've, you've already gotten back on the field. Um, you, you, were, you were in round trip sports here, um, even while you were going through your treatment, which I found incredible at the time. Right. Um, what motivated you? and really drove you through. 
really I would just set kind of short term goals like if I wanted to come and do swings I'd come and take swings um, you know seeing you coach Gordon coach Stevenson coach Toomey getting tips from you guys just telling me everything's going to be all right it really just drove me to get as physical ready as I can for the season upcoming and just really it'd take my mind off of having chemo and cancer and everything. Eric showed a lot of strength and he was the first one to say I'm just going to deal with this and we're going to be fine wow. and when I when he said that I was okay wow. you know but uh, it, it took a while to to hear everything that was being told to us and accept that okay it's just going to be probably six months but we'll be okay it took a while so it was real scary First time I hit dirt for, before the first inning, I started tearing up. You know, just knowing I had pushed myself through treatment, through like just everything I was going on to take swings, throw the ball. I was really limited to almost nothing. The only thing I could do is take swings and throw. I couldn't play. I couldn't practice. I couldn't um, play in any game situations or whatever. So really, it was just hard for me to like understand. I can't play baseball. So the first time I stepped on the field May 11th, I was just very overwhelmed from where, I'm where, from where it was. And what did you see motivate Eric to, to get through? Um, for me, uh, for me, everything has always been sports. And it's kind of been that way for Eric, too. And uh, I told Eric that the doctor said, you can still play ball. Um, you can still practice, but you can't play for the, just in case you were to get slid into or cut or anything like that, it was too dangerous. Oh, but like you could still, <laughs> yeah, you could still go out and hit, you can still go out and throw and whatever, as long as you felt good. So Eric and I very early on said, if you feel like you can do it, you go do it as much as you can because one, it'll help kind of get your mind off of all the craziness going on outside of this place. Right. Um, and two, there's a chance he's going to play baseball in June, and why not be ready if you can? And uh, he really took that bull by the horns, and when you saw us, we'd come in. It might only be for 15 minutes if that's all he could stand, but we'd try and get here almost every day, and there were some days where even after chemo, he was like, let's go swing, and I'm like, okay, your, your, your call. Right. And uh, just, you know, seeing his friends, seeing you, a lot of the other coaches, Coach Toomey, Coach Gordon, Garrett, all, all the all the guys that are here uh, have been nothing but fantastic with Eric. And he really feels like this gave him a home away from all the craziness. And uh, I think even outside of actually working on his game, just being able to come here and see different people that, that didn't look at him only as a patient. How, how has the experience changed you, Eric? Off the field, I would say a lot. I've matured tremendously. Over the past Christmas break, I started a fundraiser at my high school to collect toys and hats for kids undergoing cancer treatment. Um, really just to get their mind off of being sick, just really put a smile on their face and just really making them a little bit more happier each day when they have something. And um, on the field, before treatment, I would get very, very short-tempered when something isn't going my way or, like, a, I mess up a play or whatever. Now I can slow the game down at my own pace and really just focus on the next play or at bat or whatever. What advice, what perspective can you, can you give um, to just someone, you know, who may go through this, someone who may be going through this now? Um, what, what can you offer them? Um, really just stay strong. Don't let anyone or anything come bring you down and, um, you know, just set goals like I did. If you want to go take swings, go kick a ball or whatever, just go ahead and do it. Make, but make sure you're physically able to do it. Don't hurt yourself or whatever. So how is this, how, what, what sort of changes, and I'll, I'll go to you on this one, Chris, what, what sort of changes have you noticed in, in your son um, through this process? He got Mom's bald and know. then grew hair okay. again. <laughs> <laughs> um, he thinks about other kids, other people, more than I think maybe a normal 15-year-old would. They're kind of self-centered and very 
um, into themselves and only about themselves. But he often, he's a normal 15 year old kid, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but often he will say something or want to do something um, similar to the toy drive or the hat drive during Christmas for Children's Hospital that um, kind of catches me off, you know, I say, wow, is that my kid? <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, matured a lot faster than unfortunately he needed to. I, I think it made us kind of realize that there's a lot more to, to well, with Eric specifically, that there was a lot more to that kid than just he hits a ball and he goes to school. Um, and like Chris just said, we weren't sure he was ever going to grow up prior to this. And, <laughs> you know, granted he was 13, 14 years old, um, but he had to grow up a little quicker than a lot of kids. And the changes that he made, both with himself, like he said, you know, rough temper and that's gotten a lot better and things but he's he's a very generous kind of kid now very warm-hearted kind of kid that he always was but you didn't see it as often uh, now for instance you know I was, went to Chipotle with him one night and one of the boys from his high school uh, which I, I believe he was autistic you know he walked in and Eric was the first one to say hi to him a lot of kids might look and recognize that someone's not quite the normal kid and they wouldn't say hi, wouldn't acknowledge the kid. And to me, that was, that was big. And it's like, that's, I'm just very happy that he recognizes things like, you know, not everybody gets to say hi to a kid, right? Uh, you know, or not every kid gets, gets looked at, you know, we talk about, you hear about bullying all the time <laughs> in the news now. Mm -hmm. And that's like the complete opposite. It's, it's just so cool to see that. So we talked a little bit about you know, the, the, the emotions of, of, of finding this out. Um, how about, how about when, when you found out, you know, he's in remission, this is gone, you know, he, he's, he's beaten it? Uh, for me, um, I can tell you that I, I think at least once, twice, sometimes all day long, sometimes he's, he had cancer. Um, you know, you never forget. Right. Um, it's it's tough and you're always kind of looking like oh is there a bump somewhere is there you know is there any sign and why is he taking a nap today that kind of thing so it's a little crazy yeah. um, i quickly typed up a six month cancer free sign and we yeah. posted it on instagram so uh, that's how we celebrated that night wow so we're looking yeah. forward to the next scan that yeah. will be clear too wow and how, how about you know getting getting a chance last last may um, to, to see him step out on the field. Um, that's sort of the moment where, you know, you, you see him compete athletically. You know, that's the, that's the first chance, right, where, where you yeah. say, you know, everything's, everything's going to be fine. Well, and we got a really good laugh from that game, uh, from that first time I'm back out on the field. Um, I know that we both teared up a little bit. We actually sat next to each other. We never do during games. <laughs> because Tom's a little intense and I can't stand that. So I make him go to the center field to watch the game. But um, we sat next to each other and he stepped onto the field and I could tell he was a little emotional and we just kind of grabbed each other's hands and didn't talk much. But he went to second base, which is where he never plays. <laughs> I'm like, why is he at second base? Um, but yeah, so that was fun. It was great. And uh, I remember going to that game in the car on the way there telling Eric, hey, I know you're all geeked up. I know you can't wait to swing the bat the first time up. Take a pitch. Take a pitch. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take I'll take a pitch. Maybe I'll take two. He got on deck and he saw the guy pitching. He felt the kid was throwing a lot of stuff he thought he could handle. And he turned around and looked at me and goes, I'm going to kill the first pitch. <laughs> sure enough, that first pitch came down the middle. And he, he thank God he hit it. He hit it great. Um, about that far off the ground all the way to center field, got caught, but I was like, oh, thank God he didn't strike <laughs> um, But it was just funny to see him, yeah, I'm going to take a pitch, I'm going to take a pitch, and then he turned around, no way am I taking that first pitch. So it was exciting and uh, kind of emotional.